In this video, I'm going to talk about a very common Angular mistake, which is the overuse of RxJS to do plain, everyday HTTP operations. If you ever found yourself writing code like the one that you see in the background, then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's get started learning about this new Angular mistake. Welcome back to the Angular University channel, I'm Vasco. You might be aware that the Angular team has recently announced that RxJS is going to become optional in the Angular framework sometime in the future. According to the Angular team, RxJS is going to probably become less used in certain use cases that is currently being used. So this also matches uh, my impression over the years that RxJS has been somewhat overused for doing simple everyday operations that could be done in a much simpler way. And the goal of this video is just to give you one of those examples where RxJS is, in my opinion, being overused and where we have better alternatives. Before I jump into the example, just a quick disclaimer that the goal of this video is not to criticize or look down at developers that write the code in a certain way. I wrote a lot of this code myself until I realized over the years that this was not a good idea. Also, the goal is not to criticize RxJS in any way. The goal is just to share my own experiences and talk about what would I have done differently if I could go back and rewrite some of my code. So let me then give you an example of this common Angular mistake and then we are going to talk about the better alternative. All right, so here is a scenario. We have here a component that wants to do a complex backend save operation. The component requests the user a series of lessons, a course and a user, and then the component wants to save this in the backend in the following way. We want to do a first HTTP request to save all the lessons. Then we want to take the result of that HTTP request and we want to save a course. And then we want to take the results of the two previous HTTP requests and we want to use some of that data to save the user. We want to add a local loading indicator and we want to add some error handling. So you might have written code in RxJS to solve this type of problem that looks a little bit like this. And let me quickly go through it. So we are going to inject here the HTTP client of Angular that we're going to be using. We are going to inject here a messages service to display errors to the user to do error handling and a loading service just to trigger a local loading indicator. All right, so you might have written code that looks a bit like this. This is typical RxJS code. We are turning on the loading indicator. Then we are going to make a first HTTP request using the Angular HTTP client to the backend. And we're going to pass in here the lessons that we want to save. But then we want to take the result of this request and we want to use it to make a subsequent request. So we want to take the output of a request, use it for a second request. So for that, we have used here the concat map operator, a very common solution. Then we do our second HTTP request and we take here the output of the first request to use here on the second request. So imagine that the first request has saved the lessons in the database, but it has enriched the data with some fields that were only populated when the save was performed. So we are getting back that complete result here in the output of the first HTTP request. And we're going to use it to trigger our second HTTP request that is going to save a course. So here we have the second HTTP request. And now we want to make a third HTTP request to save the user. Plus we want to be able to use the output of the first two HTTP requests. So in order to do that, we need to be able to pass in here the output of the first HTTP request and of the second HTTP request to this occurrence of concat map. So for that, the recommended solution is to use this inner pipe operator that is being applied here to this observable. So this pipe here 
is not applied to the external observable it's to this internal observable here so we are taking the output of the second request which is this and we are going to output here a tuple that sends the output of the first request that we got here the output of the second request that you got here and that is being forwarded here down the rxjs observable chain using this tuple here so we have here the output of the first two requests so we use them to create the third request we add here the catch error operator we handle the error by showing an error message to the user and then we refrow the error using the throw error function next we want to make sure that independently if something fails or not we always want to turn off the loading indicator so we are using here the finalize operator then we subscribe to the whole chain and we trigger all the http requests so this code is fairly typical and if you look at it and think what's wrong with it then you probably already have developed rxjs brain damage just like i have from writing this code for uh, so long so nowadays i avoid this type of code i find it that it's unnecessarily complex we are adding here a bunch of fairly complex uh, concepts such as rxjs the concat map operator uh, a nested pipe here to forward data down the observable chain we are using here the catch error and the finalize operators so and we are constructing here a fairly complex rxjs chain that might be hard to understand in new developers in your application and if we look outside the angular world nobody else is doing anything like this to do http people just use the fetch api or they use simple uh, to use http libraries such as axios they use a sync await and that's it the http code that is typically written without observables it's much simpler so the problem here the so-called quote-unquote mistake if you will allow me to use that uh, term is that this is unnecessarily complex there is much easier ways to do this type of things in angular we don't need rxjs to do this we have much better tools at our disposal that allows us to make a much more maintainable simple and easy to understand and maintain solution all right and with this said let's finally reveal here the improved solution so here is what it looks like this save operation does exactly the same thing as before but as you can see it's much easier to understand it's much more linear there are not several levels of nesting and you can see that we are using here the async await syntax this is ideal for doing http it works perfectly and gives you this type of uh, almost synchronous looking code it's still a synchronous code but it feels and it uh, reads like if it was synchronous so we turn on the loading indicator we are just adding here a plain uh, javascript try catch block we add here the error handling and in the finally block we turn off the loading indicator so this is super simple to understand anybody seeing your code can understand this and here the same thing goes for the uh, save operations so here we are doing the first http request i'm still using here by the way the angular client uh, that is observable based but i am converting this observable that we get here from the http post call into a promise notice that i opted by not using here the to promise api because it's uh, deprecated so instead i'm using here the first value from api from rxjs this uh, gives us back the first value of the http post request that you give here we also have here another equivalent api last value from so you can choose either one the result should be equivalent in http calls the only difference would be if this http observable would work in an unexpected way but this is an observable coming from the http client so we know that it either emits a value and it completes or it errors out it follows 
the observable contract so you can convert it into a promise very simply in this way so you just await for the result of the promise to get executed and once the promise gets resolved you get here the result from this first backend request and you use it in the second backend request you grab the result of the second request and you use it in the third request and that's it as simple as that just plain async await promise based code this is ideal for http notice that i'm still using here the angular http client you could use the fetch api there is nothing wrong in using the fetch api directly in an angular application you could also use axios or some other popular http library and combine it with a sync await again there is absolutely nothing wrong with that i still prefer to use the angular http client i think that it reduces here uh, the boilerplate compared to the uh, fetch api it removes the need for adding the uh, application.json content type http header for example so it's a little bit more concise this way and there are also some interesting benefits in uh, using the angular http client if i ever want to convert my application to server-side rendering there are some nice uh, client hydration features there under the hood so i might as well keep using the http client and uh, convert the observables into promises and just handle all my code with plain async await promise-based code this is an order of magnitude less complex than the example that we had here with this observable chain this type of code would require a developer that has some uh, quite relatively advanced uh, rxjs knowledge on the other hand this code here anybody that knows http and promises would be able to read and maintain this code without any problem it's just much easier to use and imagine that I want to add here some conditional logic, some if else logic. It would be trivial to implement this here once again, while here it would be much more complex to implement that type of conditional logic. All right, so let me quickly summarize the main point of this video. I think that we as Angular developers need to start preparing for an upcoming future where RxJS is going to be optional and less frequently used. It doesn't mean that we won't use it in certain situations, but there are certain use cases like, for example, what I've shown in this video, typical everyday HTTP backend operations where we probably don't need RxJS for most situations. Yes, if you are building an autocomplete widget and you want to auto-cancel your backend HTTP requests, you can use a solution based on switch map, etc. But for most typical HTTP operations, it's much easier to just use plain async await promise-based code. I hope that this video helped to drive home the point that there is nothing wrong in using plain async away HTTP code to handle your everyday HTTP requests. We really don't need RxJS for that. If you want to run uh, requests in parallel, we can use promise.all, etc. We should only be resorting to uh, RxJS for doing HTTP requests in very specific scenarios, in my opinion. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video. Leave me a like and let me know in the comment section below what you think about all this. And I would love to hear your suggestions for more content here in the Angular University YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and cheers everyone. See you next time.